everyone. We're so glad you could join us today. We just wanted to let you know that our webinar today is going to be recorded. We'd like to welcome our future to our future. I'm so sorry. Welcome you to our future Falcon series. I'm Beth Hoodeman, the Associate Director of the Admissions Department, and we're so glad that you're here to learn about our college. Today, we are happy to present Financial Aid 101. In a moment, we will start our presentation, which will be followed by a question answer session. The chat and IM feature of the webinar has been disabled in the favor of a Q&A session that will be opened at the end. Now I'd like to introduce Heidi Penny, our Director of Financial Aid. Heidi? Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Heidi Tinney. I am Director of Financial Aid, and I want to go over today some Financial Aid 101, six easy steps to understanding the financial aid process. A lot of times, students and parents think that it is one of the most daunting processes ever in the college application process, and it's actually pretty simple. So we're going to take it a little step by step, and we'll go through it with everybody. And if you have any questions, definitely save them for the end, and we'll go through it. So the first thing is, your very first step is that you want to apply for the FSA ID. So the FSA ID stands for the Federal Student Aid ID, and it's unique to every individual. Um, in order to apply for the, your unique FSA ID, you're going to go to HTTPS fsaid.ed.gov and you'll actually click on create FSA ID. So if you look on the right hand side you'll see that there's two tabs, one that says create and one that says manage. And what you'll need is because it's unique to your individual person, you'll need your social security number, your date of birth, and a unique email address. So and I keep saying unique because a parent needs one and the student needs one. Okay, so if you are a dependent student, meaning you are under the age of 24, you're not active duty in the military, you are not married, you are, um, you do not have a child, you are considered a dependent student. So you'll need to file the FAFSA form um, with a parent. So you need an FSA ID and one parent needs an FSA ID and they must be unique and the email addresses need to be different. If not, you'll find out that you have a couple problems trying to apply for your FSA ID. And what this does is it does act as an electronic signature, and because your social security number and your date of birth is tied to your name and your electronic signature, do not share this with anybody. That includes any colleges that you apply to. No financial aid office, no admissions office, no athletics office, no department in any college or university is going to ask you what your FSA ID, username, and password is. So please, please, please do not share this with anybody. Step two is completing the FAFSA form. The FAFSA form stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and you can apply online at FAFSA, F-A-F-S-A edgovernor What that will do is it will actually bring you into a kind of a big consolidated site um, of studentaid.gov. You will need to apply every single year beginning October 1st. It opens up. For those students who are planning to attend Summer B, for example, you will need to complete the 2019-2020 FAFSA form. For those who are planning to attend for fall and spring in next summer, you'll need to complete the 2021 FAFSA form, which is usually fun and it gets super confusing. Um, because right now it kind of defaults to the 2021 um, aid year instead of 1920. So re remember, if you are planning to attend this summer, that you do want to make sure that you do the 1920 FAFSA form. Okay. Some information that you will need, um, and it kind of seems kind of crazy, but some students do get a little bit confused. You'll need your, to know what your citizenship status is. You'll need to know what your marital status is, whether you're single, whether you're divorced, whether you're separated. Um, you'll also need your income information. If you're dependent, you'll need your parents' information too. What's really kind of neat is the FAFSA. It used to only be one year, 
back. Now it's actually two years, so we know that you've definitely filed your taxes and your information. So for the 2019-2020 FAFSA form, you'll use your 2017 tax information. If you are filing the 2020-2021 uh, FAFSA form, you'll need your 2018 tax information. Now, we do understand that situations happen. Your 2018 income might be completely different than your 2019 year 2020 um, information and income. That's okay. After you file the FAFSA form, you'll go ahead and you'll contact Daytona State's financial aid office and let us know. And we'll walk you through what to do next. Okay? And then you'll definitely need that FSA ID that you've already done in step one. You'll use that in step two to go ahead and we'll sign it electronically. All right? Now, what's really fun is that if you don't have your tax information handy, when you get to the income information portion of the FAFSA form, they have this cool tool that's called the IRS Data Retrieval Tool, and it connects directly with the IRS, so you don't have to have really any information handy. You can actually just pull it directly from the IRS if you know your address, your Social Security number, um, and your date of birth, and it will pull it right in from the IRS directly, put it in your FAFSA form, and you're done. And it makes it nice and simple, nice and easy, and it's really a painless process, and you can pretty much complete the FAFSA form in probably about 20 minutes. Whereas us, some of us old folks, we used to have to sit there with pencils and paper for a good hour at least, calculating numbers. So just to make sure you're on the right spot, this is the FAFSA site. Remember, the FAFSA is a free form. Um, if you go to FAFSA.com or FAFSA.org, you might be charged $79 to complete the FAFSA. That is because they're offering a customer service to you, so you want to be sure that um, you are using the actual FAFSA.ed.gov to make sure that you're using a free service. Again, the only customer service you need is calling Daytona State, and we'll walk you through anything that you need. Um, and we can walk you through any part of the FAFSA form that you might have some questions on. All right, so step three is documentation. So what happens is, and it doesn't matter whether you go to Daytona State or whether you go to UCF or whether you go to Embry-Riddle or Stetson or wherever you decide to go, 30% um, of our students are selected for a process called verification where we do require additional documentation. Um, and what that is is that schools are required to compare the data that is um, submitted to the IRS and the data that you've submitted on the FAFSA form and make sure that the information matches. A lot of times they'll ask for the number in the household. They'll ask for the number attending colleges and universities. So the way that we determine this is we ask for different things such as a verification worksheet, dependent or independent, that pops up on your My Daytona State portal. Um, and then we also ask for your IRS tax returns. So again, that 2017 or 2018 IRS tax return that does need to be signed, and then because the federal government nicely changed the tax forms in 2018, all of those fund schedules, so Schedule 1, Schedule 2, we will need those as well, okay? And then any other documents that we might need. So for example, um, sometimes we have some students who haven't registered for the selective service yet, so we might ask you for... Um, some selective service documentation, or we might ask you to prove your citizenship. We might ask you for some of that information as well. So any documentation that we ask for, make sure you get it into us as soon as you can. So check your to-do list often on your My Daytona State portal. It'll show up under the, um, when you log in, it'll show up on the to-do list tile when you log in. Step four. Pretty simple, after we get all your information and we start reviewing it and we look at it, we then start sending you out, hey, here's what you've got as far as financial aid is concerned. Um, and it usually is comprised of a couple different things. The first thing is gift aid, which is what everybody wants and what everybody's aiming for. That is your, for lack of a better word, free money that doesn't need to be paid back. Um, a lot of times it's based on a student's financial need. so. A lot of times you'll get financial need-based grants, such as the federal Pell Grant that everybody hears about, the Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant. If you're a Florida resident, you might get 
Um, FSAG, which stands for the Florida Student Assistance Grant. You might, and all of these are need-based grants. So you might get some of those. You might also get some scholarships from your high school that are coming in, um, some community service scholarships. You might have applied for um, a couple scholarships that are from different companies that would be on your award if we know about them ahead of time. Okay, so again, you always want to aim for those grants and scholarships because they don't have to be paid back. And the whole idea is that you don't go into a lot of debt going into college. Okay, and then the other thing that you might see on your financial aid notification is self-help aid. These are in the form of direct loans. Direct loans are just that. They are loans. They do have to be paid back at some point, whether it be while you're in school because you do have the opportunity to pay interest on certain loans while you're in school or you can defer them until six months after you graduate. It's completely up to you. And again, this office and financial aid can walk you through the difference between the types of loans and what your options are for those loans. Also, you might see federal work study. So you might have an award, and those are great opportunities to earn as you learn. So those are on-campus jobs that are hey, I have a class at 8 o'clock, and then I have a class at 2 p.m. What do I do in between? I don't really want to go home, but I kind of want to do something. Well, let's earn some money. And it helps pay for gas. It helps pay for pizza. It helps pay for you know, lunch. It helps pay for some different things that you might need. Um, doesn't pay for tuition. Doesn't have to pay for tuition. It can just literally go to any personal expenses that you might have. Helps can pay for books and supplies, whatever you need. Um, that you can go ahead and you can just... And you earn the money. So you earn minimum wage. You earn $8.50 an hour. And then you can go ahead and use that money for whatever you need to. But you do have to work those hours. Sorry. you got to work them. Um, but you can work in any department. You might be working in athletics. You could work as a tutor. You could work in the financial aid office filing. You can pretty much do anything on campus. We also have some off-campus community service where you could be tutoring and reading to some of our elementary school students and helping them with their homework. We're always, always looking for community service volunteers and students to go out to our local element, elementary schools. So by all means, definitely consider that. Um, and that's also handled through the financial aid office as well. So, and you can view that financial aid notification, that uh, financial aid award anytime you need to. Um, when you go into your My Daytona State portal, and then click on the financial aid tile, you'll see on the left-hand side, you will see that it says um, a year, and you can just click on that year, and then it will show your awards for you. It'll make it nice and easy. All right, and then number five, apply for scholarships, because let's say you, you got some grants, but it just wasn't enough, but you know, you did see the loans, and you really, you know, you don't really want to work that much on work study. So let's look for some different scholarships. Daytona State College has an amazing foundation that offers a one application for multiple, and I mean hundreds, of different um, scholarship opportunities through their foundation. And these are specific funds for Daytona State College students. They're donors who are looking specifically for students within certain majors who are going to be full-time, some are part-time. Um, you don't have to have the best GPA ever. You can be a new student, you can be a returning student, um, you can be a nursing major, you can um, love skydiving, it could be anything. Um, these donors just really want to help Daytona State College students succeed, and one way they know they can do that is by offering some small scholarship opportunities. These scholarships can range from $250 all the way up to $1,000 per semester, so it's a great way to do it. Um, you can apply one time. It's, you only apply once. It's good for the whole entire year. We do awards throughout the year, so if you don't get anything immediately, we get donors all the time. You might find yourself with a scholarship in October, or you might find yourself with a scholarship in February. You just never know, but you can apply by going to daytonastate.edu and then clicking on scholarships, which is about three quarters down the page. And then you can always apply for external and private scholarships. We kind of already mentioned that a little bit, but those are scholarships that aren't affiliated with DSC. They might be through your high school. They might be found online, um, through newspapers, through civic organizations. If your parent has tuition reimbursement or company reimbursement, 
or some type of dependent um, tuition program. Um, it could be something like that. Uh, there's a whole bunch of different ways to find outside scholarships. And you always want to be creative when you find them because if you just type in to an online search scholarships, you and about three million of your closest friends are going to be doing the exact same thing. So narrow it down just a little bit. Narrow down community college scholarships. Narrow it down to um, state college scholarships. Narrow it down to blue-eyed scholarships. You'd be surprised what you find. So be creative when you're searching. Um, it, you actually can look up video game scholarships. If you're a video gamer like I am, it's fantastic. Um, my absolute favorite game is Mortal Kombat. There is a Mortal Kombat scholarship. Don't ask. Yes, I've looked. No, I haven't applied. I haven't gone to school yet. Anyway, <laughs> um, but definitely be creative with it. Um, don't always look at just, you know, your academics. Look at what your hobbies are, too. And then always say thank you. Even if it's a cover letter, you know, where you have to write an essay, make sure, you know, you say, um, at the beginning of the email, thank you for the opportunity, thank you for this funding, thank you for allowing you know, me the opportunity to do X, Y, and Z. It actually goes a long way because there's people behind this money. There's people behind the Daytona State Foundation money, there's people behind those external scholarships as well. So it never hurts to say thank you. Everybody likes to kind of feel a little bit appreciated. So those are some things that you want to think about. And last but not least for step six, Stay on track academically, okay? This is a huge one. Keep your grades up. If you need help, Daytona State has the resources. We have the Academic Support Center. We have tutors. We have lots of people who are willing to help you. Um, we have the Counseling Center. If you're having a rough time with, with the transitions, we can absolutely help you and we will do whatever we can. Take only the classes that are in your academic plan. I know it sounds super, super cool, and if you're like me, a lot of things interest you. Um, one minute you're into music, the next minute you're into different foreign languages, the next minute you're into, I don't know, underwater welding. It's super cool, that's great, but if you start taking things outside of your academic plan, it pushes your actual degree or certificate out more, and we can't pay you financial aid for anything that is not required for your degree or certificate, so try to stay on track. Also, do not withdraw from your classes until you've spoken with financial aid because withdrawing from your courses can have an impact on your aid for the next term, okay? So just be careful with it. Just, again, have a quick conversation with us. Hey, how do you think this is going to impact us? One or two classes throughout your career isn't going to be that big of a deal. However, one or two classes each semester throughout your career is going to be a little bit of a problem, okay? If you're not sure if you want to be full-time because you've got a full-time job, if you're a parent, if you know, you're just not sure because you're working, whatever the case may be, try half-time first. Don't be afraid to play around with your schedule a little bit. You know, try two classes first and then say, okay, yep, we can grab another, uh, we, you, we can pick up another class later on down the road. It's okay. We, you can get financial aid as long as you're taking at least half-time courses that are within your academic plan. So we want to see you succeed academically, and we want to make sure that we can keep you financially eligible. So in order to do that, you have to stay on track. So and that's on you guys. All right. And then are there any questions? Well, Heidi, thank you so much. We're going to open up the Q&A session. Um, so just in one second. OK. Um, so, so we can, give me one second here. My little gerbils in my computer are just taking an extra <laughs> second to respond to my clicks here. I apologize for the delay. Yikes, technical problem. One moment. <laughs> I tested everything before I started, I promise. Hi everyone, this is Karen Sanders, Director of Admissions. A couple things just while we're getting that going. Um, our Summer B classes begin on June 29th and Fall classes begin on August 24th. And registration is open now for both semesters. And even though our campuses aren't open to students yet, we are here for you virtually. By phone, email, or web chat, you can reach all of our enrollment services offices. And 
And I'm going to see if it'll let me bring up the Q&A. Oh, no, there, I see it coming. Heidi, did you do that? No, I did not. Okay. I didn't do anything. <laughs> I tested it before I started. Maybe we have some we have some right. helpers behind the scenes, everybody. So it takes a team. Remember that. <laughs> mm -hmm. So on your screen at the bottom, you should see a white tab that says Q and A. And if you click on that white tab, then you'll see a box to ask a question. And you can type in your questions now. In case you do want to reach out to financial aid, their phone number is 386-506-3015. This would probably be good to put in the Q&A, maybe Beth. I got it. Um, and their email is financialaid at daytonastate.edu. And the financial aid office is open Monday through Thursday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. And Fridays during the summer from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. So again, re just a reminder that the chat feature isn't open, but if you click on the white Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen, then you'll be able to type in some questions. And did whoever brought up the Q&A, are you presenting right now? The, in case you didn't know it, ah, Chris, technical help. Um, <laughs> we do have 12 bachelor's degrees now. We have our Bachelor of Applied Science, our Bachelor of Science in Accounting, our Bachelor of Science in Education. We actually have seven of those. Bachelor of Science in Engineering Technology, Bachelor of Science in Information Technology, and Bachelor of Science in Nursing. And we are so sorry about this. If, if anyone out there actually sees the Q&A tab, can you just type something in to test us to see if it's working? I did receive some feedback that some of you may not be seeing this. I can see it. And our most popular degree at Daytona State College is the Associate of Arts degree. That's our two-year university transfer degree. Um, but we also have over 100 different programs, and those change as we continually um, adapt to the needs of the community. So in addition to the Associate of Arts transfer degree, we have degrees in computer science, business, music production, photography, environmental science, a lot of health sciences, including nursing and dental sciences, optician technology. But we also have vocational programs, um, such as HVAC, automotive, cosmetology or barbering, and public services careers such as law enforcement and firefighting. So if you are looking to come to school and want to know, um, you know, does Daytona State offer it, just give us a call or come to our website. So one of the questions um, that was asked is how long does it take to find out how much money I will receive? It, depending on how quickly you get the documentation, if you're selected for verification, usually about 10 business days. And Heidi, is there anything that they have to have turned in before they're going to be able to get their financial aid package? Other than if they're selected for the verification piece of it, other than their tax forms and verification worksheet, no. How about transcripts? Uh, transcripts, yes. Uh, well, that's before disbursements, typically. We've been okay. a little bit more lenient because we know some of the schools are still closed. So we're awarding them. We're just not dispersing. Heidi? 
I know a mm-hmm. common question I hear is, do I have to be a full-time student to receive financial aid? You do not have to be a full-time student to receive financial aid. Um, Pell Grants will pay as little as one credit, and um, direct loans will pay at half time, which is typically six credits. Can I get financial aid to do like auto service or cosmetology? Yes, you can. The only programs typically it will not pay for is firefighting and EMT certificate. Well, I don't see any more questions coming in. Um, so I'd like to thank everyone for coming today and also for the support I received from our virtual friends out there. Uh, we have a series of webinars on different subjects. Please visit us next week for webinars on Welcome to DSC, the College of Hospitality and Culinary Management, and DSC Next Steps. You know, what the next steps explains what happens after you apply to the school. Um, you can find a more complete list at daytonastate.edu forward slash admissions forward slash webinars um, to see our upcoming events and to sign up and, and also receive the reminders to sign in. So thank you, everyone. We hope to see you again. And please, we are here for you. Call us, chat to us, email us. We're here to help and have a great day.